Over the millennia, the man in charge has grown curious about many aspects of the dead he harvests. Of all these fascinations, one grew so strong as to take on a form of its own. It was the story of life, the definitive beginning and end which grew into an obsession for the man in charge. This obsession became so overpowering it demanded freedom from him, to roam the realms of the alive, to truly understand ideas such as beginnings, ends, and finite. When the man in charge conceded to his urges, they manifested in the form of Thytherothax, the eight-armed maggot prince. Free from the man in charge, Thytherothax struck a bargain with the earth. He would be inserted into time at the first moment life set foot on land. The earth would allow Thytherothax to roam free, to indulge the curiosity that is his being for one age only. If by the end of this age, the eight-armed prince has failed to answer the single request from the man in charge, his freedom would end. Once per age, Thytherothax has been called upon. The hulking, baby-faced maggot form has been witnessed at various points in history, carrying out an array of tasks for the man in charge. None are pleasant. All make use of Thytherothax's skill with the seven abyssal tools he carries and his ability to dig through earth as though swimming through water. To Thytherothax, these requests seem random. Eliminate a Neanderthal tribe here. Move a bunch of plague-riddled bodies to a city's well there. He never questions them. He values his freedom from the man in charge too greatly for things like questions. Whatever form the task takes, the end goal is the same. A bountiful harvest for the man in charge, and by extension, greater power for the earth on whose surface the eight-armed prince roams. Thytherothax knows not what goal the earth has with the essence it stores. Moreover, he does not care. That curiosity was a different, much less pronounced aspect of the man in charge. Thytherothax's curiosity, the fascination that drives it, is singular. Of all the man in charge's servants at the earth's beck and call, Thytherothax is one of the few that operates more or less as a free agent. He is also one of the few that can manifest in the realm of the alive indefinitely and physically making him an invaluable asset. His form has remained fixed since his emergence, despite human infants not evolving for millions of years to come from that point. Organizations like Ipset believe the presence of Thytherothax pre-humanity could be an explanation for instances of earlier civilizations being aware of us prior to our evolution. This is, however, one of many theories. It is known that Thytherothax is directly responsible for the non-thing's tendency to avoid choosing human babies as targets, or nesting areas in close proximity to nurseries or hospitals. However, we should not be grateful for this. Thytherothax has no love for us, and his hatred for the non-thing stems entirely from them obstructing his own activities. Despite attacking them on sight, Sometimes even seeking out their nests, Thytherothax himself is unaware of the impact this has had on the non-thing's behavior patterns. As far as other entities not related to the man in charge go, the eight-armed maggot prince is usually hostile if paths are crossed. Generally speaking, he isn't interested by other paranatural entities, however. When not paying his tithe, Thytherothax occupies himself with trying to understand existence with a definitive beginning and end. He tries to understand birth, life, and death. So far, his searches remain fruitless, whether consuming, butchering, or attempting to reassemble the filthy smalls that scurry across the surface of his complete self's master. Thytherothax remains no closer to comprehension. Still, that isn't to say he isn't having fun trying.